Advisory services offered through Blackridge Asset Management, a registered investment advisor. Securities are offered through Peak Brokerage Services, LLC. Blackridge Asset Management is a separate and independent entity from Peak Brokerage Services, LLC. Member, FINRA, SIPC. And now, today with Denny, here's Denny Artachi. Good morning. Another beautiful day in South Florida. Man, I just can't get too much of this. It's not raining today. And uh, how's Mr. Evan doing today? I am fabulous. Actually, better than I deserve every day I wake up <laughs> above ground. What's the over-under on the sleep you got Over-under was seven last night. Shut the front door. Yeah, all right, well, let me go over there. I'll close it for you. <laughs> Dude, you can get fat sleeping seven hours. Tell me about it. Look at this little, uh, you know, <laughs> puppet right here. Well, folks, it's a great day. You know, I got to tell you, today the traffic was so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Everyone's coming to Florida. Well, and we have a helipad up here. You should have taken your private I, helicopter. I did tell people that the CDC you know? says you don't have to keep coming to Florida. You can move to Arkansas. Or so, well, actually... Arkansas probably wouldn't be a good spot right now. Well, uh, y'all. Yeah. So yeah. I have a very special guest today, Joey Z. Now, Z is the acronym for your, what is? You Zampano. Zampano. Giuseppe Carlucci Zampano. Yeah. Okay. So, Evan, <laughs> I actually found someone who may be more twisted than Phil. Can you that's, believe that? That's uh, difficult. Uh, I think I should have both of them. And on the air one day, and I'll just shut up and let him go back and forth. Ooh. So one of the claim of fame, Joey Z is a local musician, very talented. You know, I want him to tell the story because this guy was he, national at one point. I know we're going to get to it. Just give me a second to introduce okay. you. OK, um, he's played with a lot of famous people. He knows fame. Matter of fact, we're working on getting Mark Stein from Vanilla Fudge and Rick Derringer here as a guest because they're personal friends of Joey. And uh, but, you know, Joey is a God loving man. You were literally dead at one time. Absolutely. Weren't you, right. Yeah. And so, listen, before we get into the other stuff. Right. Because you had MRSA, sepsis. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, I think the second time it may have been COVID. I don't think they knew what it was. At but that you're time. not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. So, and then recently you had two heart procedures where. I had a heart attack and two aortic. Um, stents put on top one and then the two lower ones by the stomach this is a tough sob ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and let me tell you what i love about joey during all this time i've known you for i don't know how many years never complained about anything never poor me it's not fair wah, wah, wah. i need stimulus oh no i get no respect at all i'll tell you danny i'll tell you you're, oh. used, to, you're used to life whipping your ass aren't that's you? it i'll tell you my ex-wives all three of them one's in heaven the other two put me through hell i'll so, tell you so look joey i know you're a god fearer man as evan is as i am but I'm sure there's some listeners that really want. I don't know too many people that literally were pronounced dead. You were, and they came back. So, what the hell was that like when you were dead? Uh, undescribable peace. Undescribed. There are no words on God's green earth on this earth to tell you what the peace felt like. What did you see? What did I see? Yeah. Streets of gold, fire. Okay. <laughs> Got himself going. Get out of here, would you? <laughs> you didn't have uh, you didn't have like an angel coming home and say, "Hey, you're ugly too. Get out of here." I'll tell you. I asked for a second opinion. He said, "I'm ugly too." I'll tell you. Oh. But Joey, you literally were dead, man, and you came back. I mean, how long were you like technically out. dead? Out for? I don't know. I'd have to go back and get my medical reports. And okay, tell you, you know, but so when you were under, you saw the. The presence of God. You felt the presence of God. Absolutely. I got pictures to prove it. <laughs> so is that what has kept you positive? Because, man, dude, you had MRSA, sepsis. I remember when you went through the sepsis thing, the doctors that back then were saying, hey, dude, uh, you yeah, better they, get your affairs in order. They told Bob Paselli, they said he's got a 30% chance of making it through. You better call his daughter. This is it. You know? And and was I thought that you went in there for something and they made a mistake and that you somehow you got sepsis from being in the hospital. Is that what happened? I had a hernia surgery? 
Okay. I was number 11. They didn't clean up through one through 10. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome to the medical profession, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, how do you, seriously, man, how do you keep such a positive, jovial attitude amidst all this crap that has happened to you you get up in the morning you drop to your knees you thank god you're alive and you keep pushing and plus i got two great dogs so i'll tell you you know i'll tell you <laughs> is i, your point, is your I traded in my ex-girlfriend for, <laughs> for a dog i'll tell you i'll take four legs instead of two you know i'm concerned because your chihuahua is mexican did he come over the border no I mean, is uh, we, he illegally we, here we built a wall next door so he couldn't get through it <laughs> Did you make your dog take the COVID shot? Yeah, uh, absolutely. All right. Know. Yeah, but aren't you afraid that now your dog's going to be a zombie or he's a magnet or something? Uh, it could be. You know, he's already got fangs. The <laughs> way it's a little girl. She's got fangs. And so, she goes after the other dog. She's a weenie biter. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the fact that you really think that you're Rodney Dangerfield's illegitimate oh, God, child. That's What's the story thing. behind that? Because you, I think you said that you were adopted, right? I was adopted. Okay. Uh, my birth mother was from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Okay. She spent a one-nighter in Babylon, New York, where <laughs> Jack Roy, who was Rodney Dangerfield, is from. And here I am, and I've got his bags under my eyes, and I've, you know, I've got his voice. You look like him. You you speak like him. I'll tell you, I still get no respect <laughs> too. I'll tell you. Did you? Uh, you told me I think that you you actually found out where his daughter is, or you're trying to contact her. Yeah, I, me I met a gentleman the other uh, the other day at, in, in a restaurant in Jensen, um, and he, we were talking, and he goes, "What kind of car you drive?" I said, "A Mercedes." He goes. I drive a BMW. Check this car out. It shows me on the phone. Yeah. He goes, do you know whose car this was? I said, no. He goes, that was Rodney Dangerfield's car. I said, you know him? Or you knew of him? Yeah. And he goes, no, but I, I do work with his daughter. I do, you know, tile and refinishing and stuff like that. And he gave me Melanie's name. Her name is Melanie Roy Friedman. I've yet to call her. If you're listening out there, Melanie. I don't know. I mean, ready, what, what do you say? For, you're, I think your, your dad... I, you know, yeah, I think I'm your knew step my knew my mother biblically. I, I, yeah, no, I I think I think I'm your stepbrother. You got any money? No. Yeah, yeah definitely ask her if she has money first. No, tell her you're you're related first. Well, she and actually her, she actually uh, the uh, Rodney's wife sued her for using some content. So you okay. got to be that's a real touchy situation where I'm afraid to make the phone call. You know. <laughs> What do you say? Hey, baby, what are you doing? Hey, you know. You know, you were also in Facebook jail because you were posting Christian, Christian material. You, Christ, so you literally were in Facebook jail. Uh, three times. For posting Christian belief systems. Yeah. Now, what the hell's going on with that? Well, I mean, y y if you did you really think you lived in a free country where you can post stuff like that? Free? What's the matter Nothing's with you? Nothing's free. I'll tell you, <laughs> air's not even free these days. You go to Wawa, the machine's broken. I'll tell you. Hey, Wawa's pretty good, man. They have good subs. I mean, you can, you know. You can eat for a while in there. <laughs> I, I can't go there, though, because I've been cutting carbs and losing weight and, you know. I've been cutting everything. I don't even eat it all. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, uh, Bonnie liked the fact that you played with Dr. Hook. So Yeah, Ray Sawyer's Dr. Hook for uh, two and a half years. I was on the road with him. That was a blast. Well, you know, and some of my listeners know my background. I was a lead singer, lead guitar player for Iron Butterfly. My best friends were Joe Shermie and Floyd Sneed from Three Dog Night. Played with a lot of hippie guys, but Joe, tell them, even though we played with all these people, so what? The, I mean, this, this, exactly right. <laughs> so what? You, you know, when you, you go to a mean? jam, when you go to a jam and people go, Hey, let me play. Why? Well, because I played with blah, blah, blah. And I go, Oh, and okay. They, and they get up there and make a total idiot out of themselves. <laughs> you know, and and they it. play like their left wrist is broken or something. And mine's already been yeah, there. Yeah, it doesn't right? matter. I don't, you know, I don't advertise that because it, you, exactly who cares? That was. How Look, many years the ago? The Beatles made money on their songs. Can I play my own songs and make money? I don't know about that, bro. <laughs> but that's the thing. We played with all these people and tell them. People think, oh, there's a lot of money in music. No. It's a no, lot. there isn't. It's a lot of work. When you get on the tour bus, get ready. Yeah. You know? You also worked on TV stations, did you not? I worked for NBC, ABC, CBS, <laughs> HBO, a lot of independents in New York City as a sound yeah. engineer. Talk about uh, seeing some crazy things, huh? Uh, behind the scenes in television is not what you think it is. It's a very mean place. 
We're going to uh, take a brief pause and come back with Joey Z, ladies and gentlemen, on Today with Denny. All right, we are back on Today with Denny. I swear I want to broadcast the uh, commercial breaks because we say stuff that's hilarious. So, so Joey, you've been multiply married. Evan's mul- been married three times. Me he, too. He's got mm-hmm. He got it right this last time. Thank God. And and you, you, your your ex wives took you down for some serious money. Didn't yeah, they? my first one's in heaven. The other two put me through hell. <laughs> well, my so da- my daughter's mother got about one point five. So listen, folks. If you'd like to call in and ask Joey Z any questions, the number to call here seven seven two 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 zero nine seven eight eight. I was also asking if any of you what you felt about these mandates that are coming up: forced vaccines, masks. Uh, the border economy. Uh, I welcome you to call in, and if you have an opinion on it, uh, you know, please do so. But Joey, so you saying on when you worked in the TV sets in NBC, it's not all it's cracked up to be. No, huh? it's not. It's pretty vicious. Isn't and, it? and what comes off the AP wire and what hits the air are two different things. Because I worked in every form of that business. What's really weird is why are these people so angry and bitter? Uh, Aren't be, they making good money and doing what they I want? Because I think the devil's running the country, and and you know God's just waiting to come back and chop his head off. Well, I you know I do believe we are in revelations. Yeah. The problem is, you know, a thousand years to God is a nanosecond. You know, for us mortals, you know, time has no time means nothing to God. Yeah, you know, for us mortals, it's constant. So I don't know <laughs> how long we're in revelations or what's going on. I don't want to get too deep and scared yeah. the bejeebies, but I really do want to know you were on some major networks and I, what I hear basically is like when the camera's off or they're on break, they kind of treat the staff like crap. Exactly. So that's what it is, huh? Yeah. So you're never good enough because they won't compliment you if you do something right. They'll only cut you down. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds to me like they need some uh, self-realization. I mean, they pay you good money to cut you down. You know, you make some good money. But, <laughs> and they know. feel good when they do and that. And they feel good. Yeah. You, we're better than you. We're bigger than you. Hey, Evan, when you were in WWE for eight years, did mm. you did you feel that? Like when they went to commercial, when the camera's off, did they like treat you like, I don't know, a servant or something? No, not at all. I got treated actually really good. Okay. I can't complain. Things were good. I did my job and I went home. I didn't partake in all the other activities that a lot of people, you know, they have their clicks and things like sure. that. Yeah. I just came in, put the tux on, did the ring announcing, read my cue cards, and that was it. And wore an earpiece. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Got to wear an earpiece because, you know, you have people talking to you in your IFB while you're ring announcing and they're feeding you information. Okay. So. Well, that's good. Well, he uh, he was a WWE announcer, so could you imagine what he saw for like eight oh, years? Oh, I, I can just imagine because <laughs> I've been to New Haven Coliseum and uh, when I lived in Connecticut. What, and you saw some of those I wrestling? I saw some of those shows. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dear Jesus. They, they're like rock stars. They really are. And they packed the play. I mean, my God. What was the biggest uh, – wrestling show evan that you did like you ever do one with like eighty thousand in the audience not real those are mainly more so like the summer slams the yeah. wrestlemanias and okay. things like that but i've done um things where there's been 20 or thirty thousand. it just really depends that's a lot on of the people com- yeah, yeah it's and i me it's it's like you know you walk out there i i remember my first time doing it and and there's not enough airtime <laughs> to tell you how I got into the business, but I, I will tell you this. The very first time I did it, they handed me my cue card, and this is what you read. So you go out, and and it all started in West Palm Beach. It, it but was, was someone holding the cue card? In, no, no, know, no. It's it's a little index card. Oh, okay. I'm holding an index card. All right. And it was at a place called the West Palm Beach Auditorium, formerly known as the Leaky Teepee, now called the Jehovah Dome. Yes, I remember. Right. I know exactly the building. Yeah, it's yes. right on the corner of Palm Beach Lakes In fact, they used to have Grand Prix racing years yes. ago, and yes. they closed that street down. Right, exactly. I missed that. The Braves had their stadium there. Yeah. Uh, spring training there. So I, I get in the ring, and I'm like, get it, you know, good evening. Welcome to the West Palm Beach Auditorium for a night of professional wrestling, brought to you by the World Wrestling Federation. Tonight, you're going to see, and then you read a bad guy <laughs> name, and the crowd boos. You read a good guy name and the crowd applauds. Did they you allow you to deviate name. or you had to stay on script? Stay on script. Have oh, to stay wow. on script. It's very, very strict. Jeez. You stay right on script. But the coolest part is, is that you're controlling 
what the crowd does. Okay. That's why you have to stay on script. Isn't that what CNN and Fox News does? Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. And then it, it came time for like the main event. Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out. Yeah. That's the beer drinking dude that flicks off everybody. <laughs> exactly. So my wife is down there with my kids who were five or six and eight at the time. They're loving it. Stone Cold Steve Austin goes to the top rope, drinks a beer, flicks off the audience, and I look down and there's my kids along with 9,000 other people flicking him Flick. off right back. Oh, I look God. at my wife like, what's going on? And she just does one of these. Yeah, it just ruined your kids. <laughs> actually, they turned out okay. Yeah. They, they really did. They actually turned out really good. So, you know, the other thing too is um, we're, we're trying to get – uh, Joey's good friends. Is, it's Mark Stein, right? That's his last Mark name. Mark Stein. Mark Stein from I Vanilla just Fudge. His album. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been recording with him locally because he he lives locally. And mm -hmm. He's in the middle of moving. And Rick Derringer is a good friend. Matter of fact, we just talked about him today on the radio. Oh, you did? did you? Yeah, I think it's his birthday or something. Is, is, it, is it Rick's Rick, birthday? I believe yeah, it, I think is. it is. Rick yeah. went yeah. to the hospital when he was going yeah. through. I opened up for Rick Derringer yeah. because of Joey. Really nice guy. Mm -hmm. Very. A man of faith, mm -hmm. loves God, yeah, loves God. He's and you know, you look great. at a guy. You know, he, what a what a uh, an iconic musician. You know, I mean, he's uh, what he did himself. Plus, with Edgar Winter, White Trash, there he's in a hospital with yeah, Joey. That's awesome. Yeah, and um, yeah, cool. that's awesome. Yeah, wish Joey. Wish we that. had television here. You can see Rick and me, and I. I think I was still on drugs. That's then. funny. Who's yeah. calling? You? I know. Yeah, That's I where get. I, I have my <laughs> life insurance through them. I get so many. I swear to God, I get so many calls, and it's just That's amazing. His wife, Jenda. Oh, yeah, cool. really nice lady. Very, nice. Uh, Very beautiful young lady. Yeah. The show I opened mm -hmm. up for him. I forget. It was last year, right? That we yeah. did the show with him. Mm -hmm. November and really nice November guy. 13th. And so so check this out. So Rick Derringer's listening to me. And afterwards, I'm taking pictures and he and he says, Hey man, you're you're a good guitar player, man. You're you and you're a good singer. I really like what you do. And I'm like, Oh, thank you. What a humble guy. You know, uh, seriously. He's he's a he's a peach. He's just uh what is he doing nowadays? Uh he is recording another album. Okay. He is getting ready to do some uh stuff with um God, why can't I think of his name? Because you're usually yeah. asleep at this time and yeah, I forced um, you to get up. <laughs> Liberty DeVito on drums on the 21st. Okay. I believe they're doing a concert in New Jersey. So he is recording. He's, he's putting out a new album. He's putting out a new okay. album. He's got a new band. Um, Mark also said that Fudge is going to be releasing a single and they want to come back out. I mean, exactly. my God, how old are these guys? 75? 74, 75. <sighs> they better wow. take their vitamins. <laughs> I, well, I take the vitamins, get the shot, whatever they got to do, you know, B12. You know. So Mark's in good shape? He Mark's think he in can great do it shape. Okay. You know, for I would love to have him on the show and Rick, but, but where does Rick live? He's in uh, Northern Rick's Florida. Rick's in Daytona. We can probably get him on the phone, though. Yeah, we can do – let's get him on the phone, but we can get maybe Mark here because uh, the stories that those two have, the thing about Fudge, I got to ask him about the days with Led Zeppelin. Oh you yeah, know, he's got some biggest... right. He's we've sat for <laughs> during recording. We've sat for hours and hours, and he's told me some stories that are incredible. They were big. Led Zeppelin opened up for them. Yes, right. It wasn't the other way around. Exactly. And uh, you know, their biggest hit keep was "Keep Me Hanging On," which they had a remake of it and everything. But listen, back to you, Joey. The last procedure you had, you had the heart attack. You had a hole in your aorta. Yeah. And bro, I would I know before you went into the procedure, I was trying to be positive, but man, I gotta tell you, man, I was really nervous. You about were nervous. What, yeah, I know. And you had such a great, you know, people complain about the dumbest things right now. They really do. That and me and Evan talk life. about it all the time. Mm -hmm. We're we work too much to be concerned about some of the stupid stuff that people get no, upset there, about. Uh, as my neighbor would say, there's there's a pill that's going around now called time release stupidity. <laughs> you know, it's like, do you remember the old contact capsules? Well, you know, it's got the is little that what beads it is? in it. Yeah, it's, it, as the day goes on, you get stupider. So listen, you went through this procedure. What's the diagnosis? The doctor says you're going to live a long life, or is he saying, yeah, I don't know? Uh, the research I have done, they did the first one, then they did the lower two holes. Uh, on the East Coast, they were telling me they could fix it with pills, and the doctor kind of laughed, and he said, what are you going to do, stick the pills in the holes? 
<laughs> he goes, you got you, you got your aorta has three holes in it. You know, it's like it needs to be stented. You know, you need to stop that. So they did it. They, they were did successful. It. I feel a lot better. Uh, really, I'm what six, seven weeks out of the hospital, right? And yeah. I feel this good to get up at this time in the morning. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking forward to our show. We're gonna do a show uh, August twentieth. Yeah. Uh, is it at Mulligans or no, or no? It's a Pirates Cove, uh, right? Pirates in Cove. Yes. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to I'm that. Checking man. my calendar now for you because I know you're gonna ask. Oh uh, well, no, yeah. I I stop asking you, the Mister. This guy's got it. more. I'm than actually jobs free than August twentieth. You it's are I'm actually that's free. impossible. I my calendar is wide open August twentieth. So listen, you mean we don't have to pay to get there? <laughs> no. Oh, we might have to. I don't know. Yeah, bring, I, bring your plugs. Give me, you? give me the details. I'm going right, to be calendar. at Pirates Cove, which that that place, you know, it's kind of a uh, how do I say this nicely? Cave. <laughs> That's it. That's the thank you. Yes. Mm. It's kind of a cave, and it's really interesting because it could be dead or packed, and they have part. And I don't understand. Oh, they all come in. They all sit there, watch, synchronize, and they all come in at the same time and leave at the same time. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what it is. Well, it, I mean, look, it's on the water. It's a nice place. They also have an outside tiki bar. They have a great hotel. They have a yeah, great pool. I, I don't know why that place isn't packed all the time. I have no clue. You know what I think it is? Maybe they raise the, the younger price. generation feels that there's too many old people that go there. It's possible. So they just go down the street to the other one. But we're going to do a show on the 20th. What time? Um, I think it's a 7.30 to 10.30. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, the recent shows I'm looking forward 11. to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on the 14th, I'm doing a Woodstock tribute show at Terra Fermata, but, uh, which is going to be awesome. We did it uh, last, oh, excuse me, two years ago because yeah. we had COVID. Man. Time flies by when you're 75. Hey, mentally, you know? tell you, time flies by when you got three ex-wives. I'll tell you. And uh, we're going to do the Santana show on the 21st. But, Joey, I hope – I know that you're at this point in your life that you just don't want to play for the sake of playing. And I want to play with quality that. musicians that know what they're doing. Yeah. And, you know, the rest is just, you know, the kids are up and coming. Everybody's playing Grateful Dead. You know, and, and I'm just not getting it because I was never a deadhead or a fan and I couldn't do that much acid in my life. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, dude, do some of those shows. You're right. Like the guitar player does a 20 minute solo. I they go they, out, they smoke some weed, yeah. come back. They haven't missed a beat. They're doing more than weed at those shows. <laughs> I'll tell you, they're doing shrooms, acid, whatever. I, I think a, they should call it already dead. <laughs> already dead. dead. Instead of Grateful Dead. They're, you know. But, man, listen, I cannot believe how many people pack those shows. I, I guess you think they're all on drugs? No. <laughs> Is I'm, that a stupid question? Yeah, Am I guilty of asking oh something stupid? I don't mind being stupid. Dude, if I wasn't high, I couldn't even go by the club and listen to it. <laughs> I think you get high as a contact just yeah. walking by. I'm no kidding. Okay. Well, we're going to take another pause. I'm trying to stay on schedule. We're going to come back with Joey Z on Today with Denny. All right. We are uh, back on Today with Denny. Greg, if you're listening, I swear every time I hear it, I think it's Chris Wallace <laughs> doing that commercial. So anyway, back to those already dead shows. What's so funny is, you know, we were all young once. Yeah. And some of the girls are just, let's just say, outstandingly attractive. Mm. And then you talk to them and... From the neck up, there's nothing <laughs> going out. on. They obviously had something to smoke that wasn't exactly tobacco. They didn't pay attention what is, in school What is the saying that you have for them, uh, Evan? They oh, it's like, they're like motel. It's not motel six. It's motel five <laughs> is what you call them because nobody leaves a light on inside. <laughs> I'll tell you, the lights are on. Nobody's home. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be cruel, but I, I kind of find it humorous because we were all young once and they're all young. You know, they're trying to have fun and everything. And uh, their kind of fun is a lot different than my kind of fun. Well, yeah, you're a man of faith. And yeah. and here's the thing. Yeah, when I was younger, though, I'll uh, tell you, I didn't like cocaine. I liked the way it smells. <laughs> hey. Joey, I'm t I know for a fact, with all that you've been through, if you didn't have faith in God, you'd be a basket case. No, I'd be dead. And yeah. you would be dead. Yeah. Because the doctor said you shouldn't be here, right? Yeah. So 
I think the problem, and, and Evan, I'm I, going for an ultrasound today. They won't find anything. There's nothing in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really? I so, hope not. <laughs> you're going for an ultrasound and they find something in your stomach. Yeah. Somebody better I, call Guinness. Yeah, so what's really. Gonna, what's going to be the follow up with the heart? I mean, uh, he told me to follow up in six months. I'm like, I could be dead in six months. He goes, okay. Well, then come back in three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't pay, you know, it's like the old adage. I, Hey, Doc, I can't pay my bill. I'll give you another six months, <laughs> you know. Well, so like I said, you're at the stage of your life that you want to play music. Um, you want to record. You're doing stuff with Mark Stein. Yeah. You've been recording with Rick. him and Rick. And, uh, you know, it's really hard because the, the local music scene, there's like, uh, you know, 10 places for 100 bands. Well, it's not only that. I've never seen a band around here that, uh, aside from a few that were on The Voice or a few other bands mm -hmm. that uh, I believe Bob Duderman brings around once in a while, that really blows me away. Right. Okay? Yeah. I've seen bands, but it's just like going to see a 14-year-old playing in a band, but not the pro level I'm used to. Right. You know, polished pro level songs that make sense. Send a message. Jeez, the only message they send now is like you hate and screaming. And well, yeah, and I always joke and tell people that I don't play angry with my parents' yeah, music. Exactly. <laughs> so God, weird. man, I'd rather listen to Benny Goodman than listen uh, to I mean, Habitus the classic garbage. music, but yeah, but Duderman, he is quite a promoter. I mean, yes, there's... he does a great job. I've known Bob since he was a cab driver long time no ago. kidding yeah and terra fermata is really an amazing place it's an outdoor venue that's why i'm really looking forward to the two shows the woodstock show on the 14th and the santana tribute on the 21st mm -hmm. it's an open forum people bring their pets i've seen their kids there they it's bring outside you can mm -hmm. distance you don't have to worry about any of that baloney uh eric wickstrom is a peach i mean if it wasn't for him i'd wouldn't be in Stewart, so he's just eric is a great guy yeah so is jonathan he's treating so me like a brother i think uh you know the place was first started by ron and he handed over the keys to them and i they've kept the tradition going and yeah uh it's it's been a home for you because you were where were you living like in vera i was uh, living Cocoa in beach. cuckoo beach cuckoo i, beach, I, I right. call it cuckoo beach <laughs> because uh there's uh some interesting characters there yeah you well, know. there's some interesting characters here as yeah, well. Yeah, I know, but I don't go out of the house. But anymore. you don't, right. Yeah, you're not, you try and be in bed by eight, nine o'clock, right? Well, you're no, not a, no, not really. I'm recording until five in the morning. Is that right? Yeah, I put headphones on and just go in there and do okay. what I got to do. Yeah, because when you called me today at like uh, 7 15, I'm like, what? He's up? He probably didn't go to sleep. Did you did you sleep well yeah, last night? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Slept great. So between you and Evan, I'm catching up to you guys. I haven't been sleeping as much as I'd like to. So, um, but back to your experiences with these musicians, with the with the TV stations, you're a man of God. I mean, when you look at the news and you see the the border crossings and these vaccine mandates, and uh, did you find it hilarious? that our governor told Biden, no, you're not going to tell me what to do in my state. Yeah, and he told me, he, 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 <laughs> he kind of put an expletive in there, but but he <laughs> didn't really put the expletive in yeah, there. Yeah, we can't do it on, on family radio yeah. here. Uh, but I know uh, Governor DeSantis gets a lot of flack because... I like him. I, I, really I think do. he's pro, you know, he's a sensible guy. And, you know, Facebook, I don't post as much as I'd like to because too many people want to politicize everything. Well, this is how they backwall your computer and they get your information. So. Well, that's true. But what I'm saying is I posted a couple weeks ago how DeSantis is a self-made guy. He, he played in the World Series as a kid, Little League. He went to Yale. He graduated cum laude. Did I say that right? I don't know. He went to Harvard and got a law degree. He went to Yale? I didn't yeah. see him there. I, I went to Yale. What are you talking about? He's the, he looked over your shoulder. And I'm from New Haven. I went to Yale. We, okay. We used to go in the cemetery, skip school. And no, no. You joints. like to yell. That's what it is. You didn't go to Yale. You like to yell. So he gets his degree in Harvard. He's a decorated veteran, went to Volusia. That's all I posted, folks. Oh. And guess what? Boom. Everyone, everyone thought I was promoting 
Republicans and they call him a, a Trump bootlicker. Oh, God. And we have the war. I mean, look, the COVID thing is serious because we're like the epicenter. Hey, Evan, it couldn't be that everybody's moving to Florida and bringing it with them, could no, it? No, not at all. No, no, no absolutely no, not. No, not. It's because of the sentence. They couldn't be, you know, coming into South America and New Mexico absolutely and Florida, not. busting it's, them in, putting them in hotels. It's no. Governor DeSantis's fault that COVID is out of control here. Not that everyone's flocking. I mean, when I drove here this morning, I I said, wait a minute, this is August. Where the hell is all who are all these people? Yeah, who's going to come down to Florida in the middle of August in this heat? Exactly. I'm like, where the hell are they coming from? And we know why they're coming here. Yeah, they're moving here. They're moving here. That's exactly right. And there's a reason for it. So, look, the the COVID thing is serious. I hope people take it seriously. I mean, I don't want to get into the conspiracy things and all that. Pro-vax, anti-vax, microchips, magnets, you know. Folks, it's a serious issue that has to be dealt with. And um, but they're still coming to Florida in spite of the fact that we have, you know, how often not too many of them come to the state will get too heavy and will sink underwater. (laughs) What'll happen then? You'll get a you'll you'll get a boat. I don't know. I I go in them. They tell you in case emergency, go in your bathroom. What are you going to do? Yeah. (laughs) You know, I don't know. I don't know. So, um. Your plans for music is to just kind of take gigs as they come along, right? Yeah, and right. Yeah. You know, not that it's going to do any good. I, I mean, hit songs don't exist anymore. I don't know what's on the radio these days, but, you know. You know what's so funny? Of all the music that I think is creative coming out now, yeah, country is what rock and roll used to be. Yeah. A lot exactly. of catchy hook lines, great guitar playing. Yeah, I watch Circle And great all singing. Time. You watch what? Circle. What the hell is Circle? Circle is the country station on te- television. Oh, okay. Well, let me tell you, I've been trying to uh, stay away from uh, TV and all, but I have to get back into it because it's getting serious, folks. I'll- I'm really concerned, first of all. I'm a financial professional. I manage money for a living. Okay, yes, I'm an entertainer. I'm a speaker. I mentor. I, I love the, the medium of, of radio. And, You're you know, a kind of sore. I'm a, yeah, I am. I am kind of sore, not a connoisseur. I'm kind, kind of sore, exactly. Kind of sore. Okay. I'm really concerned that this latest stimulus package. Wh- where does the spending stop? And inflation is in check. I'm also concerned about the border. There's a lot of people coming through with COVID. Did you ever think that we would see that? I no. mean, every month is record after record. And folks, I'm. I'm not promoting. Republicans versus concern, you know, uh, I'm Democrats. An, yeah, I'm a non-party kind of. Yeah, guy. I'm just saying, what's going on with that? I haven't party for years. You, you, <laughs> you sure? You look like you have partied a little bit. Yeah, maybe. 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 <laughs> you know, Joey, you've had so many ailments that you just naturally feel high. Yeah, just that, for well, up. yeah that's it too. They yeah. say God's the most high. I'm the second. I'll tell you. So the other thing is we can't really talk about what's going on because people are just so divided. Whatever happened to politely disagreeing on stuff? Yeah, agree to disagree. Yeah, I mean, look, I unfortunately I'm right more times than I'd like to be because I love being wrong. When I'm wrong, I learn something. I went, oh, yeah. got that wrong. Let me figure it out. Yeah. Kind of like as long as you can admit to it. Exactly. Be humble. I mean, I've been stupid in my life many times, and it's okay to be stupid, folks. Just don't remain stupid. Yeah. If you make a mistake, admit to it. I had a boss at Fox when I worked at Fox. I loved yeah. Fox working there. But he said to me, he goes, you're on camera. I saw you. <laughs> you made the mistake. Don't what try do you to, do? Don't try to cover it up. Don't say the fader's bad. Fader ain't bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's the thing. People need to own up. I just got to um, own up to it. In this day and age, that's why I believe having God first is very important because if you have faith, then it's not just about you. And for me personally, the reason I do all the different things I do is I want to live a life serving others, not just myself. You see, no, that's because part of the deal. That's part of the deal. That's what God wants us to do. Yeah. We, he wants us to love each other, treat love each that other brother as they so as best as we can. I have my moments. You know when I have my moments? When I come across people who don't Stupid. believe in the same principles. And 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 it's only ten commandments. Which one don't you understand? <laughs> you know? well, so. They insist on being a negative and I just go, how's that working out for you? Yeah. 
Life, you know, life there's a good book out there it. called Psycho Cybernetics. And no, it's not about the girl I dated in high school. Okay. Why? She it, was it's psycho? about, <laughs> yeah, it's about uh, building your self esteem, but getting along with others and starting inwardly first because you have to. And, and the author was a famous um, plastic surgeon. People would go in there because they were depressed because they didn't like the way they looked and everything. Really? And he, did and he, he do Michael Bolton? Because <laughs> he, he looks terrible these days. Did Michael Bolton redo himself? Oh, my God. Can have, he still sing? Have you seen the Hollywood No, show? I haven't. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, there's a lot you of know, these stars. You know, I grew stars. up with that guy. Yeah, I, I see a lot of these stars that they do. I go, my God, look at them. They have grouper lips. No, you light and, a big lighter, they're going to melt. <laughs> uh. All that Botox, right? Oh. <laughs> Holy moly. See, I... I I lost my spot here, but that's okay. <laughs> I know I was talking about something. No, you were talking about the rules and regulations and how God has put us on this earth. And I think how that we simple should, it is. Yeah, I think life that, is simple. People have screwed it up. I think people need to really evaluate that you can be happy. Oh, that's what the thing is. I was talking to someone about the book, and I was helping a couple of family members because you know you can get rid of your friends, but you're stuck with your family, folks. That's just the way it is. And, you know, they said to me, well, I can't be like you. I go, yes, you can, because I'm like me because I want to be. And what I mean by that is you have choices. I like to let stuff go. I don't like to hold on to stuff. I don't like to have grudges. I really when I wake up every day, I really am thankful that I got to do that. Yeah, me too. And I'm I know thankful Evan's I thankful that he gets to be vertical every day. And I know you with all the medical stuff that you've been through because uh. What, what a long, strange trip it's been. I mean, but seriously, I know you love God, but you had to have been scared. You, uh, you, you'd be lying to tell me you were not scared. I got, to, stuff. I, I got to the point at, at one thing when I had MRSA. I said, God, well, if you're going to take me, get me out of here now because I can't deal with this. But if you have something for me to do here, put me back. But just take this away. Two days later, up out of the hospital, back home. Wow. So they talk about miracles. And so the doctor look at you like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be better. You exactly. were supposed to die. <laughs> <laughs> miracles do happen, folks. Yes, uh, they're real. You, God is out there if you look for him and, and seek him. Uh, I've, we're going to take our last break, and we're going to come back on Today with Denny. All right, we are back on Today with Denny with Joey Z. You know, uh, interestingly enough, this, uh, Stewart, is a great area, isn't it? I mean, we have so much waterway around here, a lot of cultural things, and they're pro music. Yes. I mean, there there's a lot of spots you can catch music in Stewart. I graduated from Martin County High School, oh, my God, a lifetime ago, and uh, a lot of people have, you know, stayed in the area. I, I of course... Uh, I went to L.A. when I was playing with these bands. Uh, I served overseas in the, in the military. And uh, this area is so unbelievable. We're blessed to live here. Yes, we are. Because <sighs> the cool thing about Stewart, too, is everybody's kind and generous, but they kind of mind their own business. <laughs> That's and, important. And if, <laughs> if you don't talk to them, they won't talk to you. If you, see, you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're pretty nice. Here. That is such a good trait to have. Yeah. I, I'm, gl I'm happy to mind my own business. Yeah, me yeah. too. And, <laughs> and you know what's so funny, especially on Facebook, I say this. I like Facebook because I get to promote my music. But a lot of people don't mind their own business. Like you post something. And they think that and they retaliate <laughs> and they retaliate. Like, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I, I, I wasn't asking for your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> and we all know what opinions are like. <laughs> Have a nice day. Don't tell me what yeah, to do. Really. So why did it get so politicized? You know what I think part of it is? This whole COVID has ripped everybody totally upside down. Well, even before COVID, Facebook was uh, questionable because I think it was an information highway for certain parts of the government. So, that's, Oh, really? That's my opinion. If you ever look at that guy's eyes, they're black. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy that owns that, what's he his name? Does, yeah, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, yes. Uh, or Zuckerberg. You know, he yeah. does look kind of like robotic. Evil. Evil. I don't know, man. I Look. I know the world's been coming to an end for the last 2,000 years and all that stuff. I hope it hurries up. I'll tell you. Yeah, I know. Oh. You can't wait to be with Jesus. I know. I, I, I want to wait a little bit longer to see if I can but do some good you, work. You know, it also says we may reign with him for 1,000 years here. 
So yeah, yeah, he may clean his place up, start all over again. Either that or we're going to get hit with an asteroid or a hemorrhoid or something. <laughs> I, I have no clue. But. Can he say that on the air, Evan? It's a <laughs> medical term, right? It's, it's, a not, a, it's term, not a vulgar yeah. slam, is it? Right? No, exactly. You're right. Well, look, I um, part of the reason I want, we're, we're good friends. We've done music together. But I really wanted listeners to hear how someone could be positive in spite of the fact that, dude, you were given death sentences a few times in your life well they, they even with this with this surgery if you research it it's called the aaa thoracic aortic surgery and they give you a outside look of five years possibly two and a half but it depends on how you take care of yourself so when they you say they give you what that they, they say your live. heart no kidding yeah because they can only put those stents will only last so long on your aorta so if you start bleeding out again, obviously that's why I'm going for ultrasound test today and making sure everything inside is working. You know, Joey, um, I personally believe that more people like you should talk to other people because we all get to decide how we deal with stuff. We have choices. Man. And you're dealing with serious stuff. I don't. You know, whenever people think they have it bad, I always tell them to speak to someone like you or a cancer survivor yeah, or someone who's been maimed or they lost loved ones, and yet they decide to make the best of this gift called life. Yeah. Don't forget, I had three car accidents in the middle of all that. <laughs> I got you did. I, I got, I got rear-ended twice in total once, you know? One lady gets out of the car with a sandwich and a cell phone in her hand. And I said, so you drive better with the sandwich in your mouth or the cell phone somewhere else? And did she have insurance? I hope so. Yeah, but she was a friend of my lawyer. That's a whole other story. <laughs> she got away cheap. So you cheap. married three times. She got away cheap. Three accidents. You had all these issues, and yet you're smiling, and you're so grateful to be I'm here. grateful to be alive. Yeah. Yeah, you that's. Know, I, got, I got a little more to do here. I'm not done yet. Yeah, well, you know, we should uh, we should record some music. I'm getting ready. I can't. Um, I spoke to Bobby early when we were in the green room. I'm excited because the IBC challenge is coming up, and I what's I, IBC? Well, International, International Blues. Blues competition. Okay. So I'm going to be I've doing done that once with uh, yes, Mike you did it with uh, and and yeah. Jake Walden. Yes. Let me tell you, I never I'd never been to Memphis prior to two years ago when I did it. I fell in love with the city. Um, it's a beautiful place. Something about it. There are so many different parts culturally that just, like, I went to the uh, Civil Rights Museum, and I had to step outside, man. I literally. Start crying. Yeah. I literally, I don't even want to think about it Did now. Did you go to Al Green's church? Who? Al Green. Did you go to his church? He said a church. No, I didn't go there. That's I, the best uh, place to go on a Thursday night. All right, so then I'm gonna ch next time I'm there, I'm gonna go there. Of course, I went to Gus's Fried Chicken because you can't go there without there. Of course, I went to Graceland, which I thought was I, cool. I haven't been there yet. I thought it was cool, but, but you know, awful small. That's <laughs> well, what no, I heard. No, it's, you know what was weird about Graceland? He had carpeting on the walls. <laughs> you know that that hideous green and brown stuff no. and they kept the appliances which were like lime green but hey it was elvis's that's place. his thing man. he had um he had a racquetball course they had you know place for horses but yeah it's it wasn't as big as i thought it would be you know but that was interesting so i'm hoping to compete again doing original blues uh, because i still love music i figured out a long time ago that i was not going to make a living and part of it was Joe Shermie from Three Dog Night was sleeping on my couch and we were eating Jack in a Box cheeseburgers. Mm. So I'm saying, wait a minute, this guy's got platinum records out there. And even when I was in Butterfly, we didn't go out all the time. Mm. I was a broke ASS musician in Los Angeles. I met Chuck Negron. Mm. Chuck, Chuck I did really, too. Yeah, I actually Chuck recorded really nice. on one. I recorded on one album for Chuck that he never released, and I, I don't know what ever happened to it because what, what happened, because I was friend with uh, Floyd and Joe, I, I did session work at American Recording with yeah. Richie Potter and Bill Cooper, which, oh, my God, the people they've produced through the years were unbelievable. So 
with regards to the local music scene, uh, you know, I hope we can do some more shows together. Maybe we can record. I've, I've got the studio. I wanted, you know, I, I posted on Facebook that I was going to have you as a guest at a lot of people know you're a good musician. Hey, they probably no wonder why they're not listening or calling <laughs> they know, in. I'll tell they you. know you're twisted, yeah. more twisted than Phil. No. Can can we officially say that he's more twisted than Phil? Or no. okay, so I want to have you and Phil on together because me and Evan will just be quiet and let you two run around. Okay, you know, we'll, kind, we'll knock heads. Kind of like yeah. giving ch kids, you know, uh, chocolate and caffeine and letting them run around. That's what you and Phil will be like on the show. I'll have some chocolate. But I wanted people to really know your story, Joey. You had that background working on on the TV stations. You played with famous people. You're still great friends with famous musicians. But what I love about you, bro. What's famous? God's famous to me. Well, those I, are just normal people that do music. That's my whole point. You have a great attitude because you're a man of faith and you're a positive thinker. Mm. And that, my friend, is something they should bottle up and sell. It's and hard to get that these days. You know, it kind of is, yeah. It's all your upbringing, too, how your parents brought you up and respect. Respect. I finally got some respect, <laughs> I'll tell you. Why oh. don't you just do a Rodney Dangerfield? Actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a podcast called Joey Dangerfield, the illegitimate I think you should. son of Rodney. I think you should have me. Let me interview on your first show. Oh, that'd be great. Right? And you should do the – because you do have his mannerisms down. Yeah. You're as twisted as he is or was, and you look like him. So go get some DNA, man. Uh, well, I'm trying to do that now, <laughs> but, you know. But if if you found out to be true that you're part of his lineage? It would be an amazing thing. What yeah. would you do? Well, I, I'd probably collect on it somehow. I, I, I'm, I, <laughs> I think you would I, shake I, some people down, yeah. No, I, I don't want his family's <laughs> money or anything like that. I can make my own, but, you know. Well, you know, whatever it is, I, I I hope your health is great. You look great, you know. I a lot better I, than I did before. I was almost gray. What are you talking about? You are gray. You're older. Uh, How old are you, Joey? He found home. <laughs> How old are yeah, you, Joey? Uh, old enough to know better. Oh, you, oh you're not going to say, Over huh? 60. You are over 60. Okay. Yeah, about right. seven years over 60. I don't 60. know if Evan's ever admitted his age on the air. Have you? All the time, 61 and proud of it. Okay, there you go. That's right. What's wrong with getting old? There's I'm 67. A lot of... You're 67? Yeah. Oh, man. Dude. I so... lived to World War One. I'll <laughs> tell you. That was my first wife. Yeah, well, don't get married anymore, okay? No, I'm going to rent it. Yeah, I think you should. Yeah. <laughs> you should, uh, with a lease, you know, rent with a lease to buy, you know, yeah, an option to it. buy. Option to buy. It. Yeah, that's something it. like that. Uh, because you know the dating world is absolutely easy these days. Yeah, piece of cake. Too easy to get. Everyone a is who they say they are and who they are. Yes, yeah. it's been a pleasure, my brother. Uh, absolutely. We're gonna play some music together. Thanks for listening, everybody, on today with Denny, and I hope you tune in next week. And Mr. Producer, try not to have more than ten jobs this weekend. That's okay? it. Ooh, yeah. And God bless y'all. God bless you all. Have a great day.